What happened in 2012? 2012. It was very strange for me, so I'll take you back to obviously when it happened. I was competing. What happened to me? That the the way that I always describe this, right, is if you get a two liter bottle of fizzy pop, and you know, turn the bottle, top, yeah. turn the top, and you get that fizz that goes like that. That's what happened in my head. And I, and after the the fizz. Um, all the way down the right hand side of my body, I had pins and needles from uh, from head to foot, including my face. Dad just, he didn't panic or anything, he just sort of took himself off. Uh, and Joanna said to me, are you, are you all right, Dad? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'll just, I'll just need to nip to the loo. I went to the toilet and all the way to the toilet, I was feeling kind of get, slowly getting worse and feeling um, weirder. And I, I was expecting that when I got to the toilet and had a look in the mirror, I'd look different, you know, because of the way I felt. Uh, but I didn't. But then he seemed to be gone for like so long. Like I remember thinking or saying to mum, he's, he's gonna miss Niall. He, he, he must have been gone for about half an hour. I just thought it was dad being dad in terms of, it can, it can be a bit, you know, when he's got a problem. You know, in the, in the immediate aftermath of it, I wasn't very honest probably with myself or with, or with anybody else. I just wasn't honest. I don't think he came and sat back down with us for the rest of the comp. He just said, oh, I'm just gonna stand and watch it from the back or from like the balcony bit. And just didn't think anything of it. Just thought he was, we'd been, <laughs> we'd been out the night before, he was probably hungover or just tired. I, re I remember I was having lunch with work colleagues and um, one of my work colleagues said to me, I think you need to go to the doctor, you, you need to see somebody and then i remember getting home from school and he'd come home like mum said oh he's not he's not very well i think he went to the gp after this was probably wednesday or thursday and the gp was like you need to go to a and e this is not a joke went into a and e handed over the letter went into the back room me and Joanna were having a bit of a laugh, you know, I was being my usual self, trying to turn on the gas and air and messing about with Joanna and we were, we were generally just having a jokey time. He was going in and out of rooms doing tests, they were pricking pins in his feet and he couldn't feel it whatsoever. This woman was literally sticking a massive pin into his right foot and he was like, I can't feel anything. And we're there for what felt like hours, well it was hours, it didn't feel like hours, it was hours. Uh, and I called over the doctor and said, can you give us an update, What, what's, how much longer am I going to be here? And he, he said to me, th and this was the point where I thought something could be serious. Uh, he said, well you're not going home, we're admitting you. And I, I said, what for? What we thought was just Dad, I don't know, being a bit ill, not feeling his normal self was actually turned into something that changed. It's like changed all of our lives. And then they said, you're going up to the high dependency stroke unit. It's crazy thinking back to, you know, we literally, I finished the competition, we drove home. I think he might have even drove. And he came into the living room and England were playing football. And he just wa watched England and had, had a bottle of red wine. Like, just, <laughs> he just had a stroke. The day that it happened, his parents went on a, a three-week cruise. So in a situation like that, boy or girl, I think you often want to tell your mum, don't you? If you're poorly, if you're unwell, you want your mum. So we went upstairs and it was all a bit surreal. I ended up in, in I was in a high dependency unit in, with all these, you know, like pads on me and hooked up to the machine. My approach to things is, is really quite, um, Let's not big it up, let's not over dramatise it. I'll play everything down. The next morning the doctors came around and there was a load of them, the doctors came around and they asked me to do two tests, right? I just shut my eyes and all my hands out like that. And he said, keep them level. And when I opened my eyes, my right hand was down there. And then I had to put my hands out like that and shut my eyes and touch my nose. And this one was all right and that one all right. The doctor, and this is not a criticism of the doctor, the doctor said to me, 
you've had a stroke, but you're young and I'd expect you to get over it. I asked the uh, nurse if I could use my phone and I got out of bed and ring, uh, called Sally and I tried, I tried to s tell Sally but I couldn't, I couldn't say the words. So my first initial reaction was, right, I'll come this afternoon, is there anything you need to bring in? And Neil was really very desperately upset. I tried to say I've had a stroke and I couldn't actually say the words because I was crying so much and so upset. I've since found out he was very frightened. Um, doctor had told him, you know, and shown him the scan picture, which I think had really, really scared him. So, so, the, so there's this, this white thing. I said, what's that? And he said, that, that's blood. He said, that's your, ble that's your bleed. What I have is I have a thing called a cavernoma. And so a hundred people have had, you know, have got cavernomas. Only 5% of those people would have one located where mine is located, which is right in the center of my brain. My thoughts of how I tell the children. She kind of played it down, and which, like I say, was her way of coping with it. But I remember getting in the car with her to go to the hospital, and I just burst out crying, like proper started crying. And Mum almost, she didn't shout at me, but I think she just, she was trying herself not to get upset. So she almost just said, "Why are you crying?" And I remember shouting back in her face, I'm crying because my dad's had a stroke. That was, I think maybe even a realization for her, the fact that I'd said the words and I'd actually got upset about it. It sort of sunk in to myself that it actually happened. I kind of didn't really understand what was going on. I was like, a stroke, yeah. <laughs> like, what are you on about? I kind of didn't really believe it. And obviously saw him in the hospital and that was humbling in itself, him, him being on the stroke ward, you know, seeing the other patients, um, kind of understanding a bit more about what a stroke was, and being like, oh my God, this is actually a, a really serious, really serious thing. So I was shocked, I was scared. I was, I was thinking, like, is he going to live? I was so scared when I went to see the surgeon, and he was a great guy as well. And we went in and he, he said, I, I can operate on this. I can operate on your thing. He says, it's located really centrally in your brain. I said, so what, what are the risks to that? And he said, well, there's a good chance you can lose your speech. And I, I just said to him, I looked at him and I said, what would you, if, the, if this was your head and you were looking at it, what would you do? He said, just go home and live your life. In, in those five and six days, my, my condition deteriorated. I was in more and more pain. Couldn't feel my right side, couldn't walk properly, couldn't feel my... I had blurred vision. His description of it to me, he used to say when he got out of bed on a morning, on his right side he'd got um, a tennis ball strapped to the underneath of his foot, which only you and I can imagine what that feels like, that you've no balance. I count myself so lucky in terms of what's happened to me, you know, really lucky, because so many people are just you know, end up with all sorts of horrendous symptoms and horrendous conditions after stroke, you know, whatever the stroke is, but there are many, many different strokes. But, you know, and I, I saw some of them people in the ward, you know, opposite in the ward, there was a 21-year-old kid playing football, had a, you know, was unfortunate enough to have a stroke, and his condition was far worse than mine. But most people, they kind of snap, have a stroke, you know, and get the conditions, and then improve. Mine was different. I had something that happened to me and then my conditions got worse. And actually, because of it, at one point, um, it was out in the garden and went over very badly and snapped ligaments in his ankle. It was badly bruised and, and very swollen um, because he'd no, no feeling. You'd have to ask now, Joanne and Sally, right? But I would be, as a, as a person in terms of my attitude to life and my belief, I would be um, slightly upset if they said to you, kneel before the stroke and kneel after the stroke, this kneel is completely different. Because, you know, I just think, why wait for a, a huge life event to then decide you're going to be somebody different than you are today? Six years on, we say things like, you know, we're going to go watch Nile compete. 
wherever in the world it is whilst we're able to do it because life's too short and why wouldn't you? You can take from it is that it's not what happens to you, it's what you then do. He was going to carry on, he was going to be there. He, was, he wasn't going to be a different person. He was going to you know, strive, support me and Joanna with whatever we wanted to do, go all in with us keep working he went he went he wanted to go back to work like two weeks after it kind of brought us all closer in a way because i'd spent the majority of my life my dad for two years worked in glasgow so i didn't see him six days a week and this it would he worked quite a lot so from going from that to him literally being at home for a year and a half we got a lot closer and it was different kind of close and different milestones. I remember when he first started walking again, he'd walk with a stick. And I don't know, from when we were younger, what we'd do on a night was playing cricket in the garden and for hours and hours on end, whereas it turned into walking my dad 100 metres down the street and back to see if he could get further than he'd done yesterday. From out the whole experience, what it's given me is empathy, perspective, you know, just to, to you know how, sh how short life can be. I'm so lucky to be a part of my children's life and enjoy that journey with them. It's theirs, it's not mine. I, my, ro my role with the kids is to support them to be the best they can be, isn't it? Yeah. Cuddle them, hold them, help them support them but it's the, the, see this is the key this is the key it's it's not the thing itself it's your attitude towards it